I'm going to be taking a look at the new Jane Davenport Glitzy watercolor set. She sent this to me along with a few other things, which I really appreciate, but I probably would have bought it anyway, even if she hadn't sent it to me, even without trying it, because I love the other two palettes that I bought with my own money from Michaels. This is the Brights palette and this is the Neutrals palette and I actually have a video where I talk about these that I'll link up above somewhere so that you can see my thoughts on these two palettes. This isn't sponsored, she didn't pay me for this and I'm giving you my own opinion. She didn't even ask me to make a video, but I'm going to. And this is gonna be my honest opinion because I have some thoughts about this palette. I put it back in the package so that you can see what it looks like when it comes in the package, but I've already tested it out. I will be showing you some swatches, giving you my thoughts on it and um, comparing some of the colors in here to colors in the other palettes. So this retails on the Michaels website for $29.99, which is the same as the other two palettes. When I bought the other ones, I used a coupon because I don't like paying full price for anything at Michaels if possible, which brings it down to like $17.99 if you use like a 40% off coupon or something like that. And I recommend with all of these like pricey art supplies, if you buy them from Michaels, use the coupon if you can. Don't buy full price unless you have money to burn, which I'm pretty sure none of us do. This is like a mermaid like underwater sort of like if you were going to paint mermaids and shit that's kind of the whole theme of the most recent I mean mermaid markers all of that is the usual her newest part of the collection has to do with either the sky or the sea and so this is most definitely I mean, it's called glitz sea so that makes sense 12 colors two of which are metallic it comes in like a metal tin just like the other two do and it comes with a thumb ring to use to hold it as a palette I don't actually use this I tend to set them down and work with a water brush you open it up up and it gives you some mixing pan areas and then the, the little pans come wrapped in paper and plastic with little pictures that have the colors on them I did that already now it comes with a little card to put in here with swatches so that you can remember which color is which because there's no names on them and one of the things that is new on this set versus the other sets is that the original cards that we got are like a glossy kind of like coated paper, which isn't great for watercolors. And this is a more of a porous paper, which was nice because it allowed the colors to go on a little bit more easily, I guess. This is the color range that you have. And then you open it up and there's mixing areas. And then here are the little pans. Now like the Prima watercolors that are in sets like this and other watercolors that are in sets like this, a nice part is that you can mix and match like the colors you like the most. If you have multiple palettes, either from the same brand or from different ones, you got these little like square, whatever little cube tins, you can mix them up and carry a custom palette. I'm extra, so I just bring them all with me. <laughs> I'm going to swatch these using a water brush in my Moleskine watercolor journal. I'm gonna see if I can get this lined up in a way where you can see all the things. I already wrote the colors in and I'm going to go and I'm just gonna go by the row, swatch them out and then the other row so you can see what they look like. I am using a Pentel Aquash water brush and I'm gonna try and like get the darkest and then bring it out a little bit so you can kind of see how they, how they shear out when you use them with water because they're watercolors and that's what they do. This is the color Water Spirit, kind of a olive -y, dark, kind of muddy green. Bring my little paper towel over here to clean my brush off. And then we have the color Sylph, which is kind of a true green. Nereed, Nereed, Nerid, I don't even know what that is but it's a, it's like a blue, like kind of a darker, a darker blue. And then we have Ariel, which is like a red with like a little bit of like a, leans more on like the purpley side of red. Like it's got that little bit of a coolness in it as opposed to like a warm brick red. It's, and then we have Frolicsome, which is like a terracotta color. I have bad names for like bad comparison names for these it's because I'm it's early and I haven't had my coffee yet or I'm in the process of having my coffee so let's be realistic here and then tresses which is a bright like really bright yellow we're gonna go into the bottom row and the first color is sea nymph which is another darker blue enchantress which is a dark foresty green Lorelei which is a less dark foresty green sea mist like a sea green sea foam green and then we have one of the two metallics flirtatious 
which is like another terracotta color, but it's a lot paler and it's got a shimmer to it. These metallics are not like super glittery metallics. They have a, a sheen to them when they're dry. They're not like in your face, which can be a good thing if that's, if it's a subtle metallic is what you're looking for, or it can be a bad thing if you want more blingy metallic. And then alchemy is like a mustardy kind of gold color. Again, the other metallic. Now I'm gonna talk about the colors individually and kind of as a set. I really love the inclusion of Water Spirit because it's one of those kind of dirty colors that works really well when you want to do underneath or deepen up certain things that's kind of hard to make with some finesse if you're not awesome at mixing watercolors, which I'm not awesome at it. These are the kind of colors that I want to make this kind of a dirty color, but sometimes I just make this like nasty, dirty brown color. So having that is really helpful to me. Overall, my favorite color in the entire palette has got to be a toss up between uh, Lorelei, which I think is utterly gorgeous. I love this color and Frolicsum, which the, ter the terracotta, again, it's not my favorite color in general, but to work with, this is a great color. I feel like Nereid, Nereid, whatever, and Sea Nymph are very, very similar to each other. And I feel like Enchantress and Lorelei aren't perfectly similar. One is darker than the other, but it's such a small amount of darkness. I wish that there was a slight amount of differentiation between the two, or maybe instead replace one of these four greens here, like maybe replace like Sea Mist with, or Lorelei with a purple, like a, like a purple that kind of fits this entire look. They feel kind of redundant. They're close enough in color where it feels unnecessary to have them both. Well, I can tell they're not the same color, but they're so close. Sea Nymph though and Nereid, Nereid, there again, there's a little bit of darkness in Nereid other than Sea, I, if I'm pronouncing this wrong, whatever, I just, I don't know. There is a slight difference in terms of darkness, but I don't even know if you can see it on camera. You can kind of see it here on the swatch that one is a little bit darker than the other. The other thing that was kind of frustrating at first was trying to figure out which ones were the metallics. It doesn't say anything about it on the packaging and on both the Michaels website or on the Jane Davenport website, it does say that there's two metallic shades. And on the little card, it says that there are two metallic shades, but it doesn't tell you which ones they are. And it's such a subtle metallic that I was like sitting there, I swatched these, shifting it in the light and trying to pick it up. I went looking on the internet to see if somebody else had figured it out. And I came to the conclusion that yes, it is flirtatious and alchemy, but it is so subtle that it's really difficult. To, and again, I don't like super glittery shit all the time. Like I like it for accents, not for main colors. And these are so subtle that you could use them for multiple different uses. It is there, like I'm pushing on this and you probably can't see it on camera, but it is a very, very subtle metallic, but it's there. It just took me forever to figure it out. So maybe pointing out which ones they are or mentioning that they are subtle would have been really helpful to me. So overall, looking at just the color selection of this palette, subtle maybe is the word for the palette. There's subtle differences between these two blues, there's subtle differences between these two greens, and there's subtle metallics. And while I am fine with subtlety, I just feel like this could have been slightly more balanced. But the quality of the, sh of the paints is beautiful, and the colors are really, really pretty, and they're gonna play really nicely with the other palettes. I wanna see if we can find any colors in the other two palettes if you have them that if you could say well do I really need this if I have these other colors so let's find out I know that there are some colors that are similar they're probably not perfectly the same but they are similar so let's take a look at these other two palettes and find ourselves I'm going to close this one up we have the brights palette and the neutral palette you can tell by the loved that my favorite of the palettes is the brights palette so I feel like kiss kiss is a very similar color to frolicsome so let's test it out because Kiss Kiss is also kind of a terracotta, terracotta color. So there's Kiss Kiss. I guess I do need to open this up. Kiss Kiss, I'm gonna put the color from the, the, the new palette on the right and the color from the old palettes on the left. So Kiss Kiss is on the left and this is Frolicsome from the new palette. So as you can see, there is a, a difference. This kiss is a lot paler than Frolicsum. The color Blueberry from the Neutrals palette, and we'll just check it against the other blues that are here. So there's Blueberry. I'll give it a little bit more just to give you a good idea of the color. And then I'm going to pull Sea Nymph. I think it's going to be lighter. Yeah, Sea Nymph is lighter than Blueberry. Now what about Nereid, Nereid? I'm going to put that right here on the other side. And that has like a more like, it's. I don't know if you can see it on camera. Let me zoom in here. So this is Blueberry, this is Nereid, and this is Sea Nymph. Sea Nymph is lighter and Nereid has like a, has like a cooler, it's not as bright. It's got that like kind of kind of dull base to it, which is really good for 
water painting. So, okay, that's not the exact same color, so we can feel good about that. And again, you can see the difference between Nereid and Sea Nymph. We'll put those next to each other really quick, just to, for one of my, you know, I'm like bitching about how they're very similar to each other. So that's Sea Nymph. And then this is Nereid. Just put them right next to each other. Okay, so now I'm looking at them next to each other with a little bit darkerness, and now they feel a little bit more different. I take back what I said about those, even though I still feel like having them both in a palette is probably redundant, but you can see the difference between the two of them. So at the same time, let's do Enchantress versus Lorelei because I'm already like, now I'm on like a roll. So that's Enchantress, and this is Lorelei. Now see those, again, there is a difference. It's hard to see on camera. There is a difference, but it is so subtle. That is about the extent of what is similar in the neutrals palette because there is a color that might be similar to alchemy but alchemy's got the shimmer to it so i don't think that really counts here's the brights palette and let's look and see if there's anything in here that's similar here's the color mermaid from the brights palette and i was going to try and see if we had a color in here that mixed but it actually looks like a mix between lorelei and sea mist none of these greens match that green and that's my one of my favorite colors from this palette we'll check the color ink really quick just in case. I don't think ink is gonna be similar than these other blues right here, but we might as well. That's purple. How did that happen? Whoops, my colors got mixed up. How did my colors get mixed up? They must have fallen out. I'll have to remember to go and change them. Let's see which one. This one, question mark, is this ink? Okay, ink is pretty similar to Nereid. I'm gonna test those again because now I'm like super confused. Okay, hold on. <laughs> so here's the color ink from the Brights palette and the color Nereid. Okay, they are different. Nereid was more like dull and darker than the one from the Neutrals palette, then ink is duller and darker than Nereid. So, okay, we know that now. And if there's a little bit of redundancy between palettes where they're like similar but not the same, that doesn't bother me as much because they're different palettes. It's when it's the same in the same palette that it gets irritating to me. Let's try Frida versus Ariel. So this is Frida. That is not Frida. Shit, what color is that? That's Ladybug. I am all mixed up. My card was in the wrong direction. Okay, so we're gonna try Frida, hopefully. This is Frida. Okay, I already know this is not gonna be the same color as Ariel because it says more purple underneath it. We'll get Ariel next to it and just see. Yeah, Ariel is redder. Frida is a little bit more magenta -y. And then the last color that I wanna test against each other are the yellows in these two because they seem closer than the yellow. The neutral palette yellow is a lot, it's a different color. So this is the color Buzzy from the Brights palette. And this is the color Tresses from the Glitzy palette. And this yellow is a little bit cooler and this is a little bit warmer. I would say overall, that none of these colors are exact matches from each other. There are subtle differences. If you already own the other two palettes, the brights and the neutrals, the, you can feel good about the fact that there are no colors that match exactly the colors in this palette. These are fun to letter with and play with, especially if you have a water brush. Like one of my favorite ways to play with watercolors like this is to take a darker color if I'm gonna letter. go into another pan. Now you can go and touch kind of the color you're going into. If you have enough water on there, it might do it automatically, but you can kind of bleed them together like that. And then grab another color. And I'm just going from color to color. The issue with this is that you have to go slow but yet work quickly enough that they don't get dry while you're working. And that's one way to just sort of go from color to color and have fun. Another thing you can do, especially if you have a water brush, get the water brush nice and moist. Grab a lighter color. I'm gonna grab a little bit more. Get this really nice and wet. That's what she said. That's what he said? I don't know. And then grab a darker color that's similar. So I'm using right now fro uh, Flirtatious and Frolicsome and then just go and add like to the side of it to allow it, and if it's nice and wet, it'll start to bleed together. Another thing that you can do is work wet on wet. So take your water brush, if that's what you're using, or your paintbrush otherwise, and get some water on the page. Just, I'm not painting anything specific, I'm just putting like a spot of water down, and then I'm gonna grab, let's see, I'm gonna grab Ariel, and I'm just gonna touch it to the water and let the, wa the paint go where the water is, because that's what watercolors do. 
That's the cardinal rule of water coloring is the paint goes where the water is. And I'm gonna grab some of this tresses and touch that to the water. And you can tilt it and let the water run and that'll like really make interesting effects. And you can use this when you're painting anything. When I paint, I start with an idea, but with watercolors, I kind of just let the water determine what the picture is gonna look like. Another thing that you can do is create more shadowing. So I'm gonna take some of Sylph and I'm just gonna paint a little like basic leaf. It's not gonna be super detailed or anything. I'm gonna add a little bit of Enchantress to the edge. Again, I'm letting the water kind of take it. I'm letting it kind of, kind of work its way out to add a little bit of shadow. And then to really deepen that shadow, I'm gonna go into Water Spirit and I'm gonna pick an area and just touch in the, the deepest areas. And that kind of creates like a shadowy, a shadowy look. And you can do that with palettes like this that have different color gradations. That's one bonus to having the colors that are slightly different from each other. But with watercolor, you're basically letting the water kind of decide where you're gonna put things. But palettes like this are great for traveling because you can use them with a water brush. When I was traveling with my family, I bought this journal when they first launched the collection. It's a Jane Davenport journal. And I was doing some watercolors of flowers while I was traveling. And all of these flowers were done using these palettes, not the new one, but the other ones. So this shows you what you can do with a little palette like that. And just like, and if you want some, any tips, beginner tips on watercoloring, I'm not the best watercolorer in the world, but I have some basic ideas. But let me know down in the comments. Palettes like this are really great for traveling, especially if you have a watercolor brush, they make it so that you can paint on the go. This video is getting a little long, so let me just give you my final thoughts on this palette. Out of the three palettes total, do I, is this one my favorite? No, it's actually probably gonna be at the bottom of the list because even though I really like the color selection, it's just not quite as versatile as the other two. My top one is still the Brights palette, but I do really like it and I'm going to use the shit out of it. However, if you are concerned at all with the colors that seem to be very similar to each other, then I might suggest going with the Brights or the neutrals. Though to be fair, unlike the Brights and the neutrals, this has some kind of more neutrally colors and some like pretty, they, this one has a better mix, I think, out of the three of them. The quality of the paints is awesome. The way they work is beautiful. My only real beefs with this palette are that there's those cut, those two greens that are really similar to each other and the fact that the metallics either need to be labeled better or slightly more metallic. Either way is fine. If they were labeled, I wouldn't care because they're the level of metallic I'm comfortable with, but not knowing, it was kind of like, shit, which one is metallic? I will give this palette a, a one out of two thumbs, a three out of five eggplants, however you want to put it for being a beautiful workable palette that just has some redundancies in it. Overall, the watercolor line, these guys, I highly recommend them if you love to paint and especially paint on the go. These have been some of my favorite watercolors, my favorite art supplies that I have purchased in the last year and I highly recommend them. This guy is a nice addition to the trio. Have you tried anything from this line? Are you interested in more talks about watercoloring? I can't promise them in the nearest near future, but I can talk about them later if you want. So thank you, Jane, for sending me these watercolors. I'm sorry if I dogged on them a little bit, but that's my honest opinion. I really appreciate it. And there's at least one other item that she sent to me that I will be doing a review on next week. So keep your eyes open for that. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next time.